So this morning we have out three mist nets and we're trying to capture and ban songbirds so we can learn a little bit more about them. Things that we can't see when they're in the tree, like if they're nesting or if they're in good condition. So how many years have you guys been doing this here at Checker Village? Uh, we started here in 2009 and um, it's a before after study looking at the effects of putting all this native grass on the ground for mm -hmm. songbirds and so mm -hmm. we started in a field that hadn't yet been converted to native vegetation and did five years of data and now we're in the after phase where we're studying the after effects. We could go out and we could listen to birds and record the, mm -hmm. the bird songs that we're hearing on paper. This type of survey gets us a lot more um, descriptive data on things like productivity, how many young the birds are having every year, mm -hmm. how long are they surviving in the habitat. Um, this type time of year, birds fatten up before they migrate. We can mm -hmm. look at their fat stores to see if we're, we're getting healthy birds out there. We can look for disease. There's just a whole lot more things we can learn about the birds by catching them in the hand. Birds really move in waves and it's like sometimes there's almost nothing and something triggers them and what's that trigger, do you know? Well, I mean this time of year they're flocking up um, for winter, you know, and so they're probably moving between food sources and, you know, somebody found a good patch of berries and called the rest of them in and it's that kind of thing. Oh, I've got something. Yep, sure do. Looks like a field sparrow. It's one of our most common birds we capture out here. Grab the legs first. And as quick as we can with these larger birds, we like to get them in a safer grip so that they don't injure themselves or um, stretch out their legs too much. So this is a female cardinal. Okay, let's go ban some birds. This is an eastern towhee. Okay. This is um, the biggest sparrow species we have in the state. And it's fairly common. It really likes edges and fence rows, places mm -hmm. like that. This one's a female because she's brown. Okay. Each one of these bands has a unique nine digit number on it that if this bird is ever recaptured again or um, maybe found dead somewhere, uh, it can be looked up in a nationwide database mm -hmm. and all the information that we collect today will be there in that database. So I'm checking to see if the bird's in breeding condition. She's female. If she were sitting on eggs, she would have an absence of feathers on her belly called a brood patch, and that just helps her transfer heat to the eggs better. But she doesn't have that going on. She's got feathers on her belly. Now I'm going to look and see if she's collecting any fat. Um, birds collect fat up in their neck region, and this is kind of a measure of health that also tells us if the bird is getting ready to migrate or not. She doesn't have any fat though. Okay. So she has a zero, zero, and zero. She is an after hatch year bird because all of her feathers look like they're nice and fresh right now. And so that's everything but weight, right? This is our fancy weighing system. Just a simple hanging scale and we put them in a brown bag to and keep them up. calm. She weighs 41 grams. So she is ready for release. We can release her here and she'll find her way back to what she was doing. I don't know if you want to put your hands out and be the release platform for oh, her. Oh yeah, I'll be glad yeah. to. Okay, and she's, she might sit there for a minute or she may bolt. <laughs> there she goes, Everyone's right back in the net. <laughs> <laughs> Hopefully not. <laughs> okay, so here we have a white-throated sparrow. Uh, this is one of our more common species that comes down here to spend the winter. Uh, they nest up in Canada, and they come down here in large numbers to winter in Kentucky. Okay, so here we have one of the few species um, that we can tell easily um, the sex this time of year just by looking at them. We have a male and a female cardinal. The male is a very showy red, and the female is a, a brown. Um, in songbirds, most of the time, the male is much more showy than the female. The female needs to blend in when she's sitting on her eggs on the nest, and the male needs to be bright and showy to attract a mate. This is a tufted titmouse, and they are what's called a winter flock leader. Uh, tufted titmice and Carolina chickadees, they lead the winter flocks of birds. 
Um, in winter, all the birds mix up and, and kind of mix species flocks. And um, these guys help to watch out for predators and give alarm calls when something goes wrong. <laughs> he's got an attitude. Yeah, he does. He thinks he's in charge. Here's one of our more common sparrows we have in Kentucky. This is a song sparrow. And it's sort of a medium-sized bird, a little bit more nondescript. This is a field sparrow, a different one we haven't caught yet today. This is one of our most common birds we capture out here. A real pretty little sparrow with a pink bill and a lot of red in its plumage. So Ben, I'm very happy to be back out of Shaker Village. You and I have worked together on a couple other projects, mm -hmm. but today it was about misnetting songbirds. That's correct. And uh, you got a lot out here. <laughs> we do. Songbirds and bobwhite quail are two of our big focuses for what we do with our habitat here. Mm -hmm. And it's a bottom-up approach. So if you build good habitat for songbirds and bobwhite quail, that uh, raises the level for everything else. So small mammals, uh, deer, foxes, coyotes. We've got bobcats now on the property. So uh, we've been really successful in, um, in focusing on the birds and then helping out everything else. Mm -hmm. And with the focus on the birds, they're really good indicator species. So if they don't like what we've done with the habitat here, they're gonna fly somewhere else. You know, it's a great place to come and, and, and watch wildlife. It Especially is. birds, but a lot of wildlife. Yeah, you can come here, you can stay, you can eat, and you can see uh, the fruits of the partnership between Kentucky Fish and Wildlife and Shaker Village at the same time.